Th that is so and you know depreciation is kind of one of those double-edged swords it's a happy now sad later type situation hi everybody uh, today we're going to talk about depreciating your rental property i'm ray halstead this is andrew mill with reh cpas um, and we're going to talk today about depreciating rental properties. Andrew, so a lot of times we get new clients um, and we'll look at their, um, their Schedule E and we see where uh, on that little line it says depreciation, sometimes it's blank, uh, mm -hmm. that when there should be depreciation <coughs> there. What are the rules around depreciating rental properties? Sure, yeah, we see it a lot. So um, if you have a rental property that you have that you're collecting rental income off of, you are required to depreciate that property over a number of years. And it is an IRS requirement. So you don't really have a choice from that standpoint. And it depends on what type of property it is. If it is a residential rental, you are supposed to depreciate the value of that property over 27 and a half years. If it's a commercial real estate, you depreciate it over 39 years. So depreciation in the accounting tax world is really just writing off the value, your purchase price of that property over a number so of So I guess years. the theory behind the depreciation is that building is only really going to last so many years. And the IRS has determined that on average is 27 and a half years for a residential and commercial right. is 39 years. So after that, the value of the structure is down to zero and basically needs to be replaced. That's the theory. Th that that right. is so, and you know, depreciation is kind of one of those double-edged swords. It's a happy now, sad later type situation because while you're depreciating that property, you're taking a tax deduction to offset the rental income that you are receiving. So it offsets the rental income and it, after you deduct your mortgage interest, real estate taxes, um, insurance, utilities, and depreciation, it usually offsets a lot of that rental wow. income that you have to recognize. So it kind of keeps you from not having to pay any taxes on the rental activities that you have for the year. So depreciation is really nice through those years that you're getting that tax deduction. But like I said, it's a double-edged sword because once you go to oftentimes sell that property at some point in your investment you know, strategy, you th there's a large gain there and you have to recapture that depreciation. So um, it's just something to be mindful of. So you, for example, if you have a property that you purchased for $100,000, you've depreciated it for 27 and a half years as a residential rental property, and now you go and sell it for $200,000, well, you're going to have to, you, you now have a $200,000 gain because you bought it for a hundred, you depreciated it all the way down to zero. Mm -hmm. Now you sold it for 200,000. So you've got $200,000 gain there. And the first 100,000 is going to be taxed as ordinary income up to 25%. It caps out at 25%. Right. That's your depreciation. So you don't recapture. get the long-term capital gain rate on that depreciation rate capture portion. It's you that, don't. It's your ordinary income tax rate up to 25%. Up, it caps out at 25%. That's the biggest um, That's the biggest conversation we always have with clients when they sell rental Understanding properties. Understanding that it's not all long-term capital gains at 15 right. or 20%, right. you know, depending on your income. But uh, there's a depreciation recapture piece that you got to be mindful of, plan for, and there's Really no way to get around it. I mean, you have to depreciate the rental property. You can't just choose not to. Right. That doesn't fall in line with IRS rules. And it's also important to note that you cannot depreciate land. Right. That's the other piece. You know, in that prior example, we didn't really account for the land, but you cannot depreciate land. And almost everything is land. It, whether it's a a condo that you own, or mm -hmm. whether it's a commercial property that you own or residential, you always have to account for land. There's almost always a portion that's pulled out for land and is not depreciable. Yep, yep. So you can't depreciate land, make sure to depreciate your rental properties. If you did, if you are one of those clients that, you know, man, I haven't, I, I didn't know, I wasn't depreciating my rental property, give us a call, we can help you out because there's no, you don't have to go back and amend all those years, amend those tax returns. You can actually do a current year adjustment. It's called a section 481 adjustment. And um, we can make a current year um, accounting change and, and get you caught up for that depreciation that, you's, that you've missed and get it right going forward so that uh, you don't have any issues. So all is not lost if you have not, not been it's depreciating not. your rental property and we can get you fixed up. Yep. Awesome. So, you know, for you folks out there that have rental properties, look at your tax return and see if there is depreciation on that line. Uh, if there's not, give us a call and we can get you fixed.